carbon is all around us. It's found in diamonds, coal, and all organic compounds. It's a building block of life and makes up to 12% of the human body. As part of the carbon cycle, plants and algae take in carbon dioxide, producing oxygen as a waste product. Heterotrophs, like our cells, breathe in this oxygen, breathing out carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is released during respiration, but also when organic carbon, including trees and fossil fuels, are burned. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, which can build up in our atmosphere. This traps more heat on Earth, leading to climate change. While carbon dioxide is natural, the amount being released into the atmosphere each week has been amplified by human activity, particularly the burning of fossil fuels. One way to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions is to use biofuels. Biofuels are fuels that derive energy from biological carbon fixation, that is, energy from plants. As the plant grows, it sequesters carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. When ready, the plant is processed and turned into biofuel. As the biofuel is consumed, it releases the stored carbon back into the atmosphere and the carbon is sequestered by the plant once more. The cyclic nature of biofuels is carbon neutral and no new CO2 is released. Or so we thought. If you look at the bigger picture, we see a different side to biofuels. Some biofuels use significant amounts of fossil fuel in production and transport, which may actually mean their net impact is carbon positive. In the case of energy crops, deforestation, harvesting and transport also needs to be included in the carbon calculation to get a true indication of net benefit. When forests are burned to make way for biofuel crops, an enormous amount of CO2 is released. If trees aren't regrown to replace the forests, then this initial release of carbon dioxide is completely unaccounted for and will affect the net benefit. But that's not all. If you have an oak tree, or if you have a field of corn or wheat or oil palm, they all require fertilizer. And fertilizer now is becoming more and more expensive because we no longer dig up old deposits of manure in places, but we do produce industrial fertilizer. Now, industrial fertilizer is made by combining hydrogen gas, which itself is expensive to make, and nitrogen gas from the air. So this process of combining these chemicals requires energy. And this energy is based on fossil fuels. Now, predominantly natural gas, but also crude oil. But no matter what, you, number one, produce greenhouse gases, right? You have byproducts, mainly you're producing CO2 and methane. Number two, you're producing a product, industrial fertilizer, which has to be transported, which has to be stored. Everything requires energy, right? You have to get it from plant, point A point B and so on. And additionally, which is uh, flippant, but it is a valuable point, fertilizer is a high explosive. The biofuel system is supposed to be beneficial to the environment. But once you take into consideration the application of nitrogen fertilizer, we see a whole nother side to biofuels. Nitrogen fertiliser, it's a pollutant in itself because it runs into our waterways and pollutes the waterways, but also in its application, manufacture and, and transport, it produces a lot of CO2 in that process. So that's a greenhouse gas that it produces. It also, when it breaks down, produces nitrous oxide, which is a greenhouse gas which is 292 times more active than CO2. So it pollutes both passively in sort of its transport and application manufacture, but also directly in its breakdown and in running to, into the waterways. As long as we keep using fertiliser to produce crops for biofuel, 
we are going to be harming the environment. But luckily, we're already working on a solution. Well, we're trying to develop Pongamia as a new bioenergy crop. It's a tree legume, so like soybean or peanut or clover, it produces nodules on its roots, which enables it to um, assimilate nitrogen from the atmosphere and turn it into a form that the plant can use, which is uh, contrary to non-legumes which require nitrogen fertiliser. Legumes are a very special group of plants. They're able to form a relationship with soil bacteria called rhizobia. The rhizobia are a special type of bacteria. They can take the nitrogen that's in the air around us, which plants aren't able to use for their own nutrition, and give it to the plant. That whole process is called nodulation because the plants form a wart-like organ on the root and it's within that wart-like organ that the rhizobia live and are able to feed the nitrogen to the plant. Using Pongamia as a feedstock to make biodiesel is better for the environment than other non-legumes because it can utilise biological nitrogen fixation. And if people realise that what we're doing to the planet by all these chemical fertilisers and here you can use Pongamia for green manure, the possibilities are endless. You know, I just get excited because I think yes manure, yes pesticide, yes nitrogen fixing, yes salt tolerant. So yeah, come on board I reckon. <laughs> Thank you. Using Pongamia results in clean, sustainable biodiesel production. I think there's a need for the future for us to uh, use sustainable biofuels, so therefore like Pongamia biofuels, <clears throat> but also to reforest the planet, to put actually more and more of marginal land. I mean, don't put it under good acreages. Uh, we need that to make tomatoes and pumpkins and so on but we need to have more trees in the future. We need more trees if we even have a chance of reducing the level of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere and halting climate change. We have an opportunity here with Pongamia to do something and take charge of our future once more. Will you join us? <laughs>